Virginia today starts with a weather authority alert day. We have a lot to get to this morning, but we want to start with meteorologist Parker Beasley. Parker, you've been tracking the potential for some severe weather. Yeah, severe weather has already started to fire up early on this on this evening and afternoon. Now what we're expecting today is some isolated to scattered storms, possibly some going severe. Now the worst of the storms will have some damaging wind and some hail. Again, the best time for this is from noon to midnight later on today. Now the storm prediction center has indicated that we are under a slight risk, which is a level two out of five conditions are fine at the time being outdoors right now, but they will start to deteriorate and get worse as the day progresses towards the afternoon hours. Now the storm threats for today, damaging wind gusts is the highest possibility. Large hail could also be embedded in some of the stronger storm cells. We could see some localized flooding if we get some heavy downpours in some areas. And then the tornado risk is on the low end of the spectrum. However, it's not entirely ruled out for today. Now the impact timeline for today from 7 a.m. to noon, we'll see isolated showers in a few storms, but from noon to five, we could see some more storms fire up along what we call a boundary. And then after 5 p.m., the cold front or cool front for summer will start to move through. And then the best chances for rain and afternoon thunder showers will come after 5 p.m. with a few possibly going severe. Jaffney. Thank you, Parker. And of course, with this alert day, make sure you download the 10 News Weather app. It's not only providing an hour by hour forecast, but it's also sending important updates straight to your phone. This morning, the Henry County Sheriff's Office continues to search for a man wanted in a homicide case. They're asking for your help to find him. Take a look at your screen. This is Akeem Clark. They say that he is wanted for second degree murder, use of a firearm in a felony and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. The Sheriff's Department asked that he is suspected to be involved in the shooting death of Antoine Hampton just after 5 p.m. on Friday. They tell us that a friend brought Hampton to Solvo Health where he later died. The Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Department spoke to the victim's friend and said that the incident happened in Henry County on Axton Lane. Henry County deputies surrounded the house, but no one was there. But during their investigation, they learned that a fight had happened between Hampton and Clark. They said that Clark pulled out a gun and shot Hampton. If you have any information about Clark's whereabouts, the Henry County Sheriff's Department is asking you to call the number you see right there on your screen. One adult and two children in trouble with law enforcement after an armed home invasion in Campbell County. Deputies say that it happened in the Daniel Hill Apartments in Brookneal around 1.30 Sunday morning. After a brief investigation, 18-year-old Zyrian Lewis faces several charges, including breaking and entering with intent to commit assault. A 13-year-old faces similar charges, and a 10-year-old was released to custody of his parents. Roanoke City Police are investigating a shooting that left one teen dead and another in the hospital. The shooting happened just after midnight Saturday on Patton Avenue Northwest. 10 News reporter Abby Coleman working for you to see why city leaders say it's time for parents and guardians to get involved. One teen is dead and another is in the hospital after an overnight shooting Saturday. I sat down with Mayor Lee Saturday where he says it's time for parents to step up. Mom, where are you? Dad, where are you? Nobody is going is to do this for you. You have to know where your children are. An urgent plea from Roanoke Mayor Sherman Lee Saturday as Roanoke saw yet another gun-related death. Roanoke seems to be under siege. President of gun advocacy group Fed Up, Rita Joyce, says gun violence has no discrimination. Bullets don't have no names on them. This latest homicide left one teen dead and another in the hospital. This happened just after midnight Saturday along Patton Avenue Northwest. Our children could be safe, but I can't keep them in the house. I can't watch over them. Lee begging parents to step up and stop their children before it's too late. Do you want a law abiding community or do you want a wild, wild west? The mayor saying it's up to the community as much as it's up to officials. What are you doing? I don't know how people go out with smiles on their faces. I'm bothered by it. I can't smile a lot when kids are getting shot and killed. Joyce backing up Lee when it comes to parents stepping in. You know, parent to parent, let's figure it out. We got to say, you know, we don't want this because it could be you tomorrow that's losing a child. Lee doubling down on this. Parents need to know where their kids are. You know if they're not in the house. You know when they go out and come in late. You know if they're involved in activities that are not wholesome, activities that are dangerous. Take 
up your responsibility and do it. Mayor Lee tells me he plans to speak with police about how youth curfew is being enforced and how it can be used to curb gun violence like we saw Saturday. In the newsroom, Abby Coleman, 10 News, working for you. Abby, thank you. In Maui this morning, teams say that they've managed to contain what is now described as the deadliest U.S. wildfires in modern history. There are at least 93 victims and dozens of others injured. Overnight, Hawaii's governor warned those numbers are expected to grow as the search and recovery effort continues. More than 2,000 structures, including homes and businesses, are now just rubble and ash. Volunteer groups say that the community is still in desperate need of clothes, food, and water. They also say there is a lot of concern on the island about the long-term housing for so many families who have lost everything. First responders say that they've searched less than 10% of the damage left behind. Our cars have burned up, their friends are dead, the dogs and animals are dead, everybody's dead. There's dead people in the water. The remains we're finding is through a fire that melted metal. We have to do rapid DNA to identify them. So just understand what this thing is, because none of us really know the size of it yet. This tragedy has attracted the views of everybody, including Oprah Winfrey, who paid a visit to Maui shelter this weekend. And she lives in Maui part time and says that her biggest concern is getting much needed resources to those who have been affected by the fires. In a week or two, all the cameras will be gone and the rest of the world is going to move on with their lives. And we're all still going to be here trying to figure out what is the best way to rebuild. Now, as thousands of people rush out of Maui and away from the wildfires, one local woman is headed towards the destruction, ready to help. Red Cross Regional Disaster Preparedness Manager Danielle England was given 24 hours notice to prep for Hawaii. She's leading a team of volunteers to support the workforce coming into Maui. First things first, she's getting people into shelters and out of harm's way. Secondly, she says that she hopes to empower the people of Maui so that they can help each other long after the Red Cross leaves. The most important thing is to help that community to be resilient and by including the folks who live in that community and encouraging them to support their own community, then they in turn are also prepared to continue to support when the rest of us leave. Of course, the Red Cross is always looking for volunteers and donations. So if you're interested in helping, all the information can be found on our word website at WSLS.com. There you will learn the 10 News is your back to school authority. Students head back to class today in Bedford, Nelson Counties and at Fernham College. So far, more than a dozen school divisions across the region have welcomed students back. And this is a reminder, slow down, watch for those flashing school bus lights and school zones. And school districts are going to great lengths to keep their kids safe in school this year, looking at things from vape detectors to training drills. 10 News anchor Alyssa Ray reached out to all 35 divisions in our area. It's working for you to break down what's new in Lynchburg City Schools. Craig County Public Schools consists of an elementary school and Craig County High School, which also houses the middle school. The school division spent around $27,000 on new door and lock upgrades, as well as keys. It spent $1,400 on door stops and window shades for classrooms and $7,000 on digital mapping that's required by the state. As part of the digital mapping, CCPS contracted Critical Response Group to map out the schools so administration and local officials can bolster emergency preparedness protocols and coordinate emergency response both inside and outside the buildings. The district also requests the Craig County Sheriff's Office and emergency services perform a mock mass casualty incident for annual training. In the studio, Alyssa Ray, 10 News, working for you. On Tuesday, Radford University faculty and staff will welcome students to campus for the first of three move-in days. This is a Highlander tradition to welcome students for the new academic year. Move-in day is the start of an exciting semester at Radford University and the beginning of several days of activities designed to help new and returning students become acclimated to the campus, learn more about student life, and a chance for fellow students to meet one another. Move-in day is an all-day event starting at 8 a.m. going until 5 p.m. Tuesday is the first of three move-in days. The others are Wednesday and Saturday.
also Virginia Tech be, begin welcoming students starting on Tuesday. It's called Move In Fall 2023. They will take place from August 15th to the 17th for first year and transfer students. Returning students will move in from August 18th through the 21st. Students will have designated time slots for their move in day and are asked not to be parked in front of the buildings outside of their designated time slot. The school says that it's important for students to have their hokey passport with them on move in day. To news, your back to school authority. Head to WSLS.com and click on back to school and there you will find school start dates, how to get a back on a sleep schedule and ways to send in your back to school photos. You know we love to see them. Keep them coming our way. We'll be showing those all month right here on WSLS 10. Carroll County leaders have now made it easier for people to apply for a concealed carry permit with an online application. While under Virginia law, training still has to be completed in person. The goal is to help people who cannot get to the courthouse during regular hours. We're told that one in five, every five citizens concealed carries. And this is just another step in making county services more accessible. Citizens don't have to come to the clerk's office anymore to apply for either their first time uh, or their renewal for their concealed and gun permits. We felt like this is a tremendous service to our citizens. Only five counties offer the online application. Most are in far southwest Virginia. Time now, 611. Coming up, we got a popular new app posing potential security risks for students in our area. The app meant to keep kids organized that could put them in danger. New at 645, roadside assistant plans can often help get you out of a jam. But we're working for you to break down how to pick the right plan for you. Anxiety is totally normal. Um, a lot of children experience it. Plus, helping your student push through the back-to-school jitters. The main thing doctors say not to do. Showers and potentially strong to severe thunder showers will move through throughout the day. Coming up, I will be timing all of this for you.
Parents, I have a question for you. Are your kids starting to get those back to school jitters? Well, if they are, psychologists say feeling some anxiety ahead of the new school year is common. To ease anxiety ahead of the school year, doctors encourage parents to first help their children figure out what's making them anxious and validate their feelings. They say that dismissing their worries or fears can actually make things worse, so don't do that. It also is helpful to ease them back into their typical routine of waking up and going to bed at a certain time. Doctors say that it's crucial for parents to work with their children and avoid letting them stay home because they're anxious. One of the worst things that we can do when a child has anxiety is to um, help them avoid the situation. So if we have our children stay home, if they're feeling nervous about it, their anxiety will actually get worse and it will get harder. So it's more, more important to arm your children with the skills that they need to manage their anxiety and not let them stay home. If your child continues to struggle with anxiety, doctors say to consider seeking some help from a mental health professional. Virginia Tech Carilion School of Medicine students are Bradley Free Clinic Dentist host at an oral health day for refugees. Through the partnership of Commonwealth Catholic Charities Refugee and Immigration Service, dentists provided free oral health care to those who can't receive dental benefits. Most ref refugees have Medicaid. However, most dentists do not accept the insurance. We're told the Bradley Free Clinic will set up dental visits for refugees once a month. If you love Target candles, listen up. Target is recalling over 2 million candles after reports of jars breaking while candles were burning. The recall includes multiple scents of the threshold glass jar candle in both the 5.5 ounce and 20 ounce sizes. They were sold at Target stores and online between February 2020 up to last month. Target said that they've received 19 reports of the candle jars breaking or cracking, injuring at least one person. If you have any of these candles, you can return them or throw them away. Today is a weather authority alert day. We are expecting isolated to scattered storms throughout the afternoon. Now some of these could go severe, but the main threat is damaging winds and hail. This will cover most of our zones as most of us will see some rainfall. Again, some severe storms. Now this will last from noon until midnight later on this evening. The Storm Prediction Center has indicated that we are under a slight risk, which is a level two out of five. So we have the chance of seeing some isolated uh, severe weather later on this afternoon, potentially some damaging weather, if that. Now the threats for today, primarily damaging wind gusts, large hail are also is also possible. Flooding is on the lower end of expectations, same with the tornado. However, we can't really rule those two out because we could have a brief downpour or a brief spin up or two later on this afternoon. Now radar is starting to show this system out towards Kentucky, getting into uh, Illinois and parts of Indiana at the moment that will start to track further and further to the west. You'll notice there's bits and pieces of red embedded in here. That's where the strongest of these storms will be. And as it tracks further and further to the west, we are tracking heat that will be fueling it from the south. There are heat advisories and heat warnings in effect for much of the Gulf Coast. This includes parts of the Carolinas. Now, as this tracks further to the east, our winds will start to shift and be out of the south. What this will do is bring in heat and moisture from the south, fueling some of the thunder showers that we will see later on this afternoon and into the evening hours. Future tracker showing partly cloudy conditions to start off our morning. A few showers here and there by 12. The highlands are experiencing a few showers, but you'll notice we're partly cloudy throughout most of the day. By 4 p.m., this is about the hottest time of the day, so the sun is just beating down on us, so temperatures will be hot. But as we go throughout the afternoon, by 8 p.m., we are still in the clear. But overnight tonight, we can expect to see a line of thunder showers start to get itself together and track through our area. That's why we are issuing this weather authority alert day until midnight tonight, because I think the nocturnal threat is becoming more and more consistent in the models, so we could have some evening impacts later on, possibly some severe weather. Now for Tuesday, there's still leftover moisture and we'll see some showers start to develop about 2 p.m. tomorrow, but I think we wrap up shortly after then as partly cloudy skies will start to build in and then high pressure starts to move in after. If you are headed out the door this morning, we are slowly warming. Rain chances are low until about 10 a.m. And we could expect some showers, so maybe give the kiddos some rain gear as they're headed to school because they will more than likely need it on their way home this afternoon. For our zones today, 87 in the Highlands, 85 in the NRV, 90 in Roanoke and Southside, and then 91 
down in Lynchburg. Now your hourly muggy meter for today, it's going to feel humid, sometimes tropical as our dew point temperatures get to about 73. And when we factor in the heat and the humidity, we could be feeling like the triple digits in south side Lynchburg in the Roanoke Valley, feeling like the 90s, perhaps the mid 90s later on this afternoon. We are tracking humidity. Humidity is very, very high for today, but after this front starts to move through, drier air will come in and will last until the end of the week. But we see the biggest relief on Wednesday. Again, today is a weather authority alert day, 60% chance of rain. We get to about 90 here in the Roanoke Valley. But again, after we get through this round of severe weather through tomorrow, we will start to dry out and clear up just in time for the weekend. Jaffney, you know what time it is. Yes, it's that time saver traffic report for you at 620. And as you look at your screen, we are crash free. Things are looking great if you're driving to Blacksburg. You are on time on 460 coming from Parisburg and from Christiansburg. If you're coming from Whitfield on I-81, it'll take you a little less than an hour. But if you're coming from Roanoke, take you 48, 48 minutes if you're driving on I-81. Again, we are still crash free, which means everybody is doing a great job on the roadways. But if that changes, we'll keep you updated right here on Virginia today. And now the Freedom First Sports Desk. The first and 10 camp tour rolls back to the River Ridge District for a check on the Cave Spring Knights, another local school opening 2023 with a first year coach. Now with Nick Leftwich taking over at William Fleming, leading the Knights is Hunter Shepard. Priority one in camp has been building a physical identity. Cave Spring wants to keep the offensive scheme intact while switching things up on defense. But the goal remains the same, make things difficult for each opponent. Our entire goal is walking to any game we're playing is we're going to beat the other team up. That's the hope. That's where we want to get to is when teams play us by the fourth quarter, they, they, they don't want to continue. Whether we walk off that field, winners or losers, they don't want to see us again. And that's the, that's the hope that we're trying to build here. We have some seniors and we have some lower classmen who are working hard and we have some people who are returning with all state honors and region district honors. And I think that he's taking what we have from last year and turning that into making it work. Just a lot of hitting really, just way more than last year. We've Almost all practice we've just been hitting and a lot of drills and I think that's really going to work on uh, just technique and overall physicality. Cave Spring opens the season with Western Albemarle. Virginia Tech football held its annual fan day on Sunday. The event gave Hokies fans and supporters a chance to have fun, get autographs, and meet their favorite players and coaches just weeks before the 2023 season gets started. And the same was true in Charlottesville for the UVA Cavaliers. In NASCAR, we had the Verizon 200 at the Indy Road course. Michael McDowell led a race high 54 laps and went on to win at the Brickyard. He's the 13th different driver to clinch a playoff spot via a race win. That's your morning sports. I'm Eric Johnson. Here he is. Still ahead, an adoption success story. As we get closer to the halfway point of our Clear the Shelters campaign, we are sharing the good news for two local pups, plus a challenging rescue involving a pair of bobcats that are babies orphaned by their mother. The call to action from one nonprofit.
This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. The Southwest Virginia Wildlife Center in Roanoke just received two patients not frequently seen in their facility. Take a look at this. This pair of one week old orphan bobcat kittens arrived this weekend. Look at the little faces. I know, right? Their eyes are still closed, still need feedings every two to three hours. Staff say that rehabilitating these two will present some very difficult challenges due to their young age and the time of year. And due to a long and expensive re rehab, the center is asking for donations to help with their care. Now, if you would like to help, we have a link on our website at WSLS.com. Those kittens were just so, so precious, Parker. Yeah, they're adorable. They sure were. Today is a weather authority alert day. We're tracking the potential to see some storms later on this afternoon with some possibly going severe. Now we could see some damaging wind and some hail embedded in a few of these storm cells. A lot of us will see rain, but not all of us will see severe weather today. Now this weather authority alert day will last from noon today until midnight later on this evening. Now the impact timeline for you from 7 a.m. to noon, we'll see some isolated showers, a few storms here and there. Storms are possible from noon to 5 p.m. Again, some could go severe during this time, but the best time and potential for severe weather is after the 5 p.m. hour. So Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich and Chris Michaels will be here to track that all out for you. Jaffney. Time now 627 10 news is your back to school authority and we're working for you on what's going on in our local school divisions. We go zone by zone checking the report card for your schools or your students school. Student behavior and administrative response collection reports gives us a look at the number and types of incidents happening in each school. Every school district in Virginia is required to submit these annual reports for Virginia's school quality profile. And today I'm giving you a look at what I found in our Lynchburg zone. I'm going to show you the number of incidents. Welcome back. Virginia Today starts with a weather authority alert day. We have a lot to get to this morning, but we want to start with meteorologist Parker Beasley. Parker, you've been tracking the potential for some severe weather across the area later. Yeah, some severe weather has already started to pop up out to our west, but this will start to move towards the east throughout the afternoon and evening hours. 
Damaging winds, severe storms, and some hail could be embedded in some of these showers that pop up. Now, these will be isolated, and not all of us will see severe weather, but the coverage is for most of our zones. This will last from noon until midnight later on this evening. The Storm Prediction Center has highlighted one area here in yellow. That's a slight risk for all of us. That's level two out of five at the moment. Now, we could see isolated showers pop up anywhere from Central Kentucky, parts of Tennessee, all the way up into Baltimore, possibly into parts of New York later on this afternoon and overnight tonight. Now, for your weather authority alert day, wind is possible. That is the highest of expectations. We could see some damaging wind gusts embedded in some of these cells. That's also a medium chance for rain or for wind. We could see some hail embedded in some of the stronger storms, some maybe dime sized hail all the way up to ping pong sized hail. Localized flooding isn't really a concern with this, but we could get some pretty heavy and isolated pockets of rain at times, and then a brief spin up of a tornado can never be ruled out when there is severe weather coming into play. Satellite and radar is starting to show that cluster of storms build up in western Kentucky that will start to track towards the east as we go throughout the day. You'll notice there is a surface front here. There's also one located west of the Ohio River Valley and wedged right in between is a cool front. Now, where these three things come together, that's what we'll see probably the most intense weather. You'll notice that winds will also start to shift out of the south, bringing a lot of heat from our Gulf Coast states and from the Carolinas. So a lot of fuel, a lot of moisture, a lot of ingredients lining up later on this afternoon and into the evening hours. Stay weather aware out there today. Jaffney. Thank you, Parker. And with this alert day, make sure you download the 10 News Weather app, not only providing you hour by hour forecasts, but it also sends important updates straight to your phone. 10 News is your back to school authority. Students head back to class today in Bedford and Nelson counties and at Farum College. So far, more than a dozen school divisions across the region have welcomed students back. So again, just sending you a quick reminder, slow down and watch for those flashing school bus lights and school zones. School safety, top of mind for many parents as kids return to the classroom. 10 News is your back to school authority. That's why we're working for you, breaking down the latest state reports, documenting student safety incidents at local schools. 10 News anchor Rachel Lucas highlighting some of the biggest concerns in each of our zones. Student behavior and administrative response collection reports gives us a look at the number and types of incidents happening in each school. Every school district in Virginia is required to submit these annual reports for Virginia's school quality profile. And today I'm giving you a look at what I found in our Lynchburg zone. I'm going to show you the number of incidents reported in one of the more severe categories behaviors to determine persistently dangerous schools. Now this category is for illegal activity that would require police involvement. Last school year, Bedford County had the highest number of reports in this zone. Five total incidents were reported. Two at Liberty High School, one for illegal possession of a handgun, the other possession of illegal drugs with intent to distribute. One at Jefferson Forest High School for illegal possession of a handgun, rifle, or shotgun. One at Goodview Elementary for illegal possession of a projectile weapon and one at Forest Middle for illegal possession of controlled drugs and substances with the intent to distribute. Amherst County had four reports, two at Mona Lisa and Middle, one for assault with a firearm or weapon, and one for illegal possession of a handgun, one at Amherst County High School for illegal possession of other firearms, and one at Madison Heights Elementary for illegal possession of a projectile weapon. Lynchburg City had one at East e. Glass High School for sexual assault and Appomattox County had one report at Appomattox County High School for illegal possession of controlled drugs and substances with the intent to distribute. To see your school's report card and the safety incidents at your school, go to WSLS.com. There, we've compiled a breakdown for all of our local school districts and links to the state's original reports. In studio, I'm Rachel Lucas, 10 News, working for you. We've got some growing concerns over an app that allows students to share their classroom schedules. It's called Saturn, and right now it's one of the top 10 free apps at the Apple App Store. The app was created back in 2018 as a way to help students manage their class schedules along with sharing them with close friends. But critics of the app have said that the app is a privacy nightmare, and some information is available for people who aren't even at the school. Chris McKenna with Protect Young Eyes says that there's a multiple risks with the Saturn app. 
this app wasn't designed with children and some of their behaviors in mind. And then you, uh, you can upload your schedule. You can upload all kinds of other content from your camera roll events that can be posted to the entire school. Roanoke and surrounding school systems have some school buildings with accounts. McKenna suggests that parents should download any app that their kids download. The parents can find a list of those apps to help with monitoring your child's devices by visiting our website, WSLS.com slash back to school. Now, while you're there, make sure to send in your back to school photos of your little ones for a chance to see them on TV. We're doing it all month long. Coming up, I will be talking about showers and storms with the potential for some to go severe. Also, a look at the week ahead, a little tease. We will dry out and we will cool off just for a little bit. A Roanoke Bridge replacement with a big impact. The delayed project is now starting to take shape. And our Clear the Shelters campaign continues this morning. We've got the three-year-old pup looking for a family after more than one year in a local shelter. Ten News is working for you to clear the shelters this month. We're featuring adoptable pets from our local shelters with the hopes of finding them forever homes today. And we want you to meet Skye. Skye is one smart pup. She's a three-year-old pit bull terrier. She knows a number of commands, including sit and place. And she also can do a few possum tricks like playing dead and giving high fives. This gal is sweet and aims to please, and she needs a home where she is the only pet and the humans are older teens or adults. If you're interested in adopting Sky or seeing other adoptable animals, you can sit, go to visit uh, WSLS.com and go to our Clear the Shelters page. Obviously, if you have an animal or something, you might want to keep them indoors today, Parker. Oh, yeah. 
Today is a weather authority alert day. This is in effect. We're in a slight risk for the time being. That is yellow highlighted on your screen. It's also a level two out of five. So what we could see is some isolated to scattered severe storms and the chances exist for most of our zones, but not everyone will see severe weather. The impacts coming with this damaging winds and hails. The timing of things will be this afternoon into the evening hours. Now the setup right now is showing storms starting to develop out west, particularly in parts of Illinois getting into Indiana and Kentucky. These storms will start to track towards the east closer and closer to us throughout the afternoon hours and again into the evening. Jaffney. Pick a good company to have your back when you hit the road. We're working for you, comparing the best roadside assistance service. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Now, maybe you have a flat tire, ran out of gas, or needs a jump start. Roadside assistance can plans can often help get you out of a jam. There are lots of options these days. That's why 10 News anchor Brittany McGraw explains how to pick the right plan for you. No matter where you get your roadside assistance. I have roadside assistance to my insurance provider, GEICO. I've had AAA for about 25 years. Plans often include the basics like a tow or jump start and help if you have a flat, run out of gas, or lock yourself out of your car. They're sold by companies you've probably heard of, AAA, Better World Club, and Good Sam. If you drive a lot, this kind of plan is the best because it has the, the most robust towing assistance setups depending on which tier you choose. And if you drive an older car, obviously there's a, more of a chance that something could happen. You might need a tow. If you drive a new car, it might come with a plan from the manufacturer. CR says typically these cover the same period of time and miles as the manufacturer's warranty. Be sure to read the plan carefully before you need it, because what's included can vary widely by manufacturer. Towing is generally included, but... Typically, they'll only take you to a dealership service department. And that won't do you any good uh, outside of business hours if you need an emergency repair. 
That's why CR says it might be good to get an additional plan from another provider, check your credit card or even your auto insurance policy, for example. If you have a few drivers in your family and several cars, CR says using coverage from your insurer can be a good deal. These plans can be added right to your insurance premium. Just read the fine print to make sure you don't risk a premium increase if you call for service. Credit card companies have programs where you don't even have to enroll. You can just pay a flat fee per service. CR says credit card companies may not be the best value, but their service saves you from paying full price for a tow. Brittany McGraw, 10 News, working for you. The Consumer Report says that one other downside of credit card plans, you miss out on the extra discounts that you find with other plans. Today is a weather authority alert day. This will last from about noon through tonight. Now scattered to isolated storms are possible for all of our zones with the potential for some storms to go severe. The worst of the storms will have damaging winds and hail embedded in them. The Storm Prediction Center giving us the severe weather outlook for your Monday. Yellow highlighted here in a slight risk. That's a level two out of five. That includes the southern portions of the Ohio River Valley, and also it includes us. Now, the biggest threat for today is damaging winds. We are in the medium chance that's highlighted there in yellow, so we could see some damaging winds pretty much widespread throughout our area in some of the storms. Hail is also possible. We could see some larger, uh, large, larger pieces of hail, but hail is on the lower end of expectation. Same thing goes for tornadoes. Although we are in the low chance for a tornado, the primary threat exists west of I-81 through parts of the Roanoke Valley and into Lynchburg. Now the impact timeline for today from 7 a.m. to noon, we'll see a few isolated showers, possibly a storm here or there. Now from noon to five, storms are more possible, but some could go severe during this time. And then the best chance for storms is after 5 p.m. later into tonight, perhaps around the 10 to 11 p.m. hour. Now. Local radar is showing that we do have some storms starting to get together out to our west. We noticed some of the oranges and reds highlighted here in parts of western Kentucky. They're dealing with heavy, heavy rainfall this morning. They actually had a tornado warning and they were under a severe thunderstorm watch. Now, that being said, this same cluster will start to track further and further to the east throughout today, and it could bring us some severe weather like it's brought parts of Kentucky, Illinois and Missouri. We're also dealing with or with heat advisories in parts of the Carolinas and for parts of the Gulf Coast states. Now, what this does is when this storm cluster tracks through to the east, winds will shift and they will be out of the south and it will be driving a lot of heat into our region. It will also be bringing a lot of moisture, so a lot of fuel for thunder showers later on this afternoon and into the evening hours. Future tracker is showing partly to mostly cloudy conditions through the morning. A few pop-up showers here and there. We could see some isolated and discrete supercells like we saw last Monday. These could bring some hail and some damaging winds, but the threat through 10 p.m. We noticed we could get some heating, but by 12 a.m. later on this afternoon, more moisture is starting to track through our area overnight tonight, and then more moisture will be left over on your Tuesday. So we are tracking the potential for some severe weather later on tomorrow. But after about 6 p.m. tomorrow, we are primarily and mostly in the clear today. Isolated showers and storms with the potential for some to go severe. We hit 90 here in the Roanoke Valley. Your hourly muggy meter for today, we cap off at about 73 degrees, so it's feeling really humid and perhaps tropical at times. Future Tracker is showing that we could feel like the triple digits in parts of Southside and then 90s all across elsewhere. Now, here's what we're tracking after severe weather moves out. The jet stream starts to dive down. We get just a brief cool down on Wednesday, but by Thursday and Friday, we're returning back to average temperatures. So here's a look at your extended forecast. 60% chance of rain on this weather authority alert day. But once we get through the severe weather later on this afternoon and tonight, we clear up and we cool down on Wednesday. Jaffney, it's now time for Time Saver Traffic. Yeah, driving to Roanoke looks pretty good, man. Again, crash-free with green conditions, a little bit of a slowdown coming from Christiansburg. But other than that, we are looking good. 10 News is your back to school authority and the first day of school excitement that families normally feel at this time of year has been replaced by frustration as the country faces a bus driver shortage. According to Hop Skip Drive, the shortage caused by lack of competitive rate, pay, excuse me, recruiting problems and strict regulations is affecting 80 percent of districts nationwide. The problems touching both cities and suburbs from Central Florida to Chicago. One district in Kentucky was forced to cancel almost a week of school because of transportation 
transportation troubles. A closer look at just how bad the shortage is and the temporary solutions currently underway coming up this morning on today. Now, after more than three years of delays, the Wasina Bridge replacement project is finally set to begin. The project was first introduced back in 2020, but due to COVID, was continuously pushed back. The city originally thought construction would start in May of 2023, but faced more setbacks. The bridge sits atop five Norfolk Southern Railroad tracks, so coming to an agreement with the company set them back further. The city of Norfolk Southern finally reached an agreement last month, so that now they are set to get to work. The project is expected to finish around May of 2026. Time now 651. We got five things you need to know are next. Stay with us. Here's a look at five things you need to know before you head out the door this morning at 655. This morning, the Henry County Sheriff's Office continues to search for a man wanted in a homicide case. They say that Akeem Clark, who you see right here on your screen, wanted for shooting and killing another man after an altercation just after 5 p.m. Friday. If you have any information about Clark's whereabouts, you're urged to call the number you see right there on your screen on our website at WSLS.com. Carroll County leaders have now made it easier for people to apply for a concealed carry permit with an online application. Application while under Virginia law training still has to be completed in person. The goal is to help people who cannot get to the courthouse during regular hours. We're told that one in every five citizens conceal carries, and this is just another step in making county services more accessible.
Growing concerns over an app called Saturn that allows students to manage and share their classroom schedules with close friends right now is one of the top 10 free apps at the Apple App Store. Critics of the app have said that the app is a privacy nightmare and some information is available for people who aren't even at the school. And 10 News is your back to school authority. Students head back to class today in Bedford, Nelson counties, and at Farham College. So far, more than a dozen school divisions across the region have welcomed students back. Alrighty, today is a weather authority alert day. We could see some isolated storms that become scattered, possibly bringing us severe weather. The big threat for today is damaging winds and hail. The timing of this will be from noon today, overnight tonight, about midnight perhaps. Now where this will happen, storms will be isolated. Not all of us will see severe weather, but some of us will certainly see, see severe weather. The impact timeline for today, 7 a.m. to noon, a few showers here and there from noon to five. Storms will be possible and a few could go severe, but after 5 p.m. going to about 2 a.m. tonight, that's the best chance for us to see some severe weather later on. Jaffney. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. We'll leave you with a live look right here from the Blacksburg Sky Cam from our Virginia Tech Sky Cam. Excuse me. Thanks so much for joining us.